Apparently had a lot of comments and, and maybe of particular interest to Raptors fans. Here's what he had to say uh, when he was asked a question about Kyle Lowry's conditioning. You know, Kyle had uh, a challenging year for a lot of reasons. And uh, I don't have to get into them. They're personal. They're, they're other things. But he had a challenging year with the move and, and, and everything uh, earlier in the season with... Uh, he had some injuries, missed some time, and then there were some personal issues. But look, at the, the bottom line with me and for me, uh, as far as uh, hoping that you can get the most out of a player, it, I, I don't have to go back and, and talk about it, is that you got to be in world-class shape. You just have to be. And... and uh, that is something as you get older, there's a point of diminishing returns as you get a little bit older, that when you're younger, you can, you know, you can do things in spite of that. But I'm not saying that when he was younger, he wasn't in the kind of condition that he was in this year, but he definitely is going to have to address that and uh, it will be addressed. And to get to what the perfect, you know, overall conditioning for him to be successful because he plays the game you know, in a manner where he needs his strength and his size. You know, he's uh, he's not, you know, he's not Tyler Hero. He's he's not that lean kind of guy, but but I think he can be in better shape. And, you know, and I do believe that the pain of, of losing and the reminders that you send out about this, uh, you know, might change his mind a little bit. But I do think that uh, that he can be in better shape next year. And, no, we'll address it and we'll try to help him as best as we can because it's not easy when you get a little bit older. So, you know, I'm going to get your thoughts on this, obviously, but I just want to say I've always said that, you know, heat culture to me is basically just a copycat of immigrant culture because they preach, you know, working hard. And in this case, you know, Asian uh, dad, <laughs> especially with Asian parents, they love to talk about their kids' weight. Um, love, love to always talk about how they're eating too much, but then if they go home, they're not eating enough. So I'm not surprised, you know, Pat Riley is here to talk about his starting point guards conditioning. Um, you know, the one thing I, th I think we should separate before we talk about Pat's comments is like right off the top, he did acknowledge that Kyle had a really difficult season personally. You know, there were personal issues and he left the team for those reasons for an extended stretch during the regular season. But at the same time, when you sign, what was it, three years, 90 million around there, and you're expected to compete for a championship because that's what the Heat are trying to do right now. Uh, I think it's perfectly fair for, for Pat to, you know, have those comments because everything that he says publicly, he's going to have these conversations with Kyle privately as well. And it's very consistent with what they expect in, in that Miami Heat environment. And honestly, this is not the first time that Kyle's conditioning has been talked about during his career. So what, what are your thoughts hearing Pat Riley's comments? I mean, on the whole, I agree with him, right? And again, to your point, Riley, it, this was not him throwing Kyle Lowry under the bus or being insensitive to the season Kyle Lowry had. He very plainly put out there that he does understand there were some like personal issues. He missed a lot of time with that. It's not like he was saying, this is your fault, Kyle. But mm -hmm. he was also pointing out the fact that the Heat need Kyle Lowry to be in better shape or better condition, however you want to phrase it, to compete for a championship. Full stop. That's what it is. Now, you can... I understand the the argument that the Heat made their bed and, and now it's up to them to line it because if you include this year now, Kyle Lowry over the last four years has missed an average of 20 games per 82 contest. So they full well knew what they were getting into when they signed Kyle Lowry at this stage of his career. I think the one thing that's different is usually he can miss that time and get himself right for the playoffs and then we know what Kyle Lowry in playoff mode looks like. The difference this year is that he missed, what, 8 of 18 playoff games. So I think you can also say, well, the Heat weren't signing up for that. They knew he'd maybe miss a quarter of the season on average with various, you know, nicks and bruises at this stage, but they weren't expecting him to miss half the playoff games. That's one. Um, I know that, look, we all love Kyle Lowry. He's the greatest Raptor of all time. He's a Hall of Famer. He's a champion. Like, no, you should be able to acknowledge multiple truths, okay? And I think this is one of the problems with the way we talk about basketball or sports in general now where people seem to be like, well, no, I like this player or this guy was the best player on the team I root for and therefore how dare you ever say anything even legitimate 
when you're criticizing mm -hmm. him. You should be able to acknowledge multiple truths. Kyle Lowry is all of those things, I said. And, and that's why people in Toronto and Canada and around the NBA love him for being the competitor that he is. Pat Riley is not above criticism, okay? As much as I... And anyone who knows me or has followed my work knows I do joke around about loving Pat Riley. He's the godfather. It's a Shawn Michaels level of you know, uh, I was, admiration. I, I was very yeah. upset when Adrian Brody was cast as him without me being consulted <laughs> once. But no, I'm, but he's not above criticism, okay? Even the great Pat Riley has made mistakes. Look at the Duncan Robinson contract. Look at the way he handled LeBron James' exit. Uh, look at the way Dwayne Wade's first exit was handled when, mm -hmm. when Pat Riley botched that relationship with a franchise legend. It was then salvaged, but... So I understand all that. I'm not at all here to say, well, if Pat Riley says it, it has to be true. He's not above criticism, and Larry is great for all the reasons I mentioned. But all those things can be true. Those things can be true, and it's true that they need Kyle Lowry to be in better shape. When they are on the hook for, I think, $58 million over the next two years, mm -hmm. and they are very much in win-now mode, this is not a building thing. You're like, they're trying to win a championship right now. The fact of the matter is... They need Kyle Lowry to be in better shape from start to finish next season. That's it. And so I do not understand, other than just if you want to say it boils down to like being a fan and fandom at its core is being irrational. Mm -hmm. if, unless you want to boil it down to that, I really have no idea why everyone was crying about these comments. So like, is it really that shocking to you that NBA executive wants nba star they are paying 58 million dollars over the next two years to be in better shape like no that that it's pretty par for the course in pro sports yeah and i think if there was a player if the raptors signed a player for three years and 90 million and you know the player was not in shape and it needed to you know clearly needed to have better conditioning you know i think i would expect the same conversation to take place and across you know any other team um and trust me i, I get fandom works in a particular way uh that's why i refuse to acknowledge jason tatum as a top 10 player still believe it's a just a slightly better version of Paul George. But um, no, I'm with you. And and I think Pat Riley's done this before, is all I got to say. And like the other context is during that press conference, because I know this was a clip that got a lot of attention, he called out Tyler Hero. He said, if you want to be a starting player on a winning team, you need to be a two-way player, right? And I think he, he mentioned Bam had to be better offensively right, too. Like right. And like Bam had a terrible series against Boston, in my opinion, outside of, you know, I think the game three, when he did really well, but I think that coincided with Robert Williams not being in the lineup. So no, I'm completely with you. And I think if you're rooting for Kyle Lowry, you would want to root for him to, to, to get in shape. And actually in this latter part of his career, even though, you know, as age is catching up as injuries, you know, I'm not writing off Kyle Lowry because I think one of the reasons why Miami brought him in is he doesn't need to do as much as he was being asked to do for most of his tenure here in Toronto. Right. There's a reason why they have all of these other players with Jimmy, with Bam. And, you know, when he is healthy, he's still, like you mentioned in the first segment, one of the highest IQ players in the league. And even if he's physically diminished, he can still impact winning at a very high level. And I want to see Kyle back at that yeah. level next season. And I think the evidence that he wasn't in the bet, whether it's sh like he was injured at the end too, right? He mm -hmm. hurt his hamstring. Now, there are a lot of people that will tell you those kind of soft tissue injuries have to do with conditioning too, sure. right? And like, but I think the difference this year, like I was saying, not just that he also missed playoff time in addition to the regular season time, but it's that he wasn't able to be as all-around effective as he was in the past when his offense was gone. Like, how many times in the playoffs with the Raptors or at various points of stretches with the Raptors, even during their championship run, where mm -hmm. his shot might abandon, or not even that his shot was abandoned him, but he would be unwilling to shoot or like he would kind of lose confidence in his shot. And it, I won't say it didn't matter, but it almost didn't matter because he was doing so many other things that impacted winning. And I think the biggest difference this year is other than maybe a game or two here or there in the playoffs, he wasn't doing those other things at a high enough level to negate the fact that his own shot had kind of abandoned him again or that he wasn't looking for his own offense. And again, that all plays into he's got to, it's not just that he has to play better, he needs to be better conditioned from start to finish. Yeah. As Pat Riley said, and to your point about anything Pat Riley's saying in a public setting, he's probably telling a player to his face, I'd be willing to bet a lot of money on the fact that Kyle Lowry was not blindsided by this. Okay, yeah. like he very much was probably told this to his face by, by, by Pat Riley. And if Lowry being the guy that we know him to be in the years we've covered him, I would bet that Kyle Lowry probably agrees with Pat Riley. Like I, mm -hmm. I just don't see this in any way, shape or form as Riley throwing Lowry under the bus in ways that a bunch of Raptors fans seem to believe it was. Yeah, and Kyle Kyle knew when he signed with Miami that this is the culture and this is the organization that that he's he's walking into. 